about this new topic, road load data acquisition. See, what is this road load data acquisition is all about? See, uh, this road load data is the data which is collected from the various locations on a vehicle, okay, as it transverses the road profile. So the vehicle will be running in different locations, right? So you are going to take the data from the various locations that are the different uh, curvy road, up the hill, down the hill, okay, uh, different uh, climatic conditions, okay, and different weather environmental conditions. And even uh, the wet can be wet road, dry road. Did whatever the data you're going to collect are the direct result of the effect of the road on a vehicle transfers with respect to the chassis and also by various components of the vehicle. And again, uh, we're going to study the load transfer path from the road surface again. Um, if the road is uh, having a lot of uh, bump, bumps, a lot of uh, pits, how that is going to affect? You are going to study that uh, based on this acquisition of the road load data and this road load data will help to include the wheel spindle movement and it also helps to analyze the wheel spindle acceleration, wheel spindle force, sprung mass acceleration, unsprung mass acceleration, strain etc. Okay and again uh, and even the speed at which the vehicle travels okay and the velocity of the air which is striking the, the vehicle at different density level of uh, uh, the altitude level so those details you are going to collect in, 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 in basically space and also by various components of the vehicle and again uh, we are going to you have seen the low cycle fatigue so what is the induced test ultimate stress and then the endurance limit those things are given here okay now this new topic road load data acquisition see what is this road load data acquisition is all about see uh, this road load data is the data which is collected from the various location on a vehicle okay as it transverses the road profile so the vehicle will be running in different locations right so you're going to take the data from the various locations that are the different uh, curvy road up the hill, down the hill, okay, uh, different uh, climatic conditions, okay, and different weather environmental conditions, okay, everything you have to get, and even uh, the wet, wet road, dry road, Did whatever the data you are going to collect are the direct result of the effect of the road on a vehicle transfers with respect to the chassis and also by various components of the vehicle and again uh, we are going to study the load transfer path from the road surface again um, if the road is uh, having a lot of uh, bump, bumps a lot of uh, pits how that is going to affect you are going to study that uh, based on this acquisition of the road load data and this road load data will help to include the wheel spindle movement and it also helps to analyze the wheel spindle acceleration wheel spindle force, sprung mass acceleration, unsprung mass acceleration, strain, etc. Okay, and again, uh, and even the speed at which the vehicle travels, okay, and uh, the velocity of the air which is striking the, the vehicle at different density level of uh, uh, the altitude level. So those details you are going to collect in, 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 in basically to, to study the behavior those things we are going to see and uh, what is the aim here is to the obtain the information that would be used to even based on this you can optimize the behavior of the various components of the vehicle so you have the wheel you have the tire you have the braking system you have the suspension system based on this you can optimize the various components basically chassis the load and even when i say the, the crash engineering those things and all the structure you can improve and how they are going to interact with the components okay and uh, finally we are going to ensure that the overall performance of the vehicle is going to get improved that is the main objective of this and even this road load data also provides information on the prospective customer usage of the vehicle 
different type of gears that the vehicle is running okay how the vehicle components respond to the use of the vehicle and most importantly how much fatigue and damage the usage imposes on the vehicle components okay um, so for example uh, how are you engineer basically okay as it enables the engineer to make some of the information for modification to the design of your vehicle and this will also help them in order to ensure that it also meets the durability performance level chosen by the manufacturer and in some cases the legislation of the country the vehicle would be used in so this is the main objective of this uh, road load data acquisition and uh, as a part of this you have the road test simulator rts which will help to uh, collect basically the information uh, th this is basically a simulator uh, which has become a very good alternative to the running vehicle on providing the, the data this can be done in the case of lab for a specific uh, period of time the usage of this rts place directly on the availability of the road load data from the physical you know you to test the vehicle physically what are the data you can get it here with the help of this simulator and uh, the aim here is that they get some of the details with respect to the, the damaging point of view which will affect the vehicle durability and uh, you can also they get the details about the rts and these are different type of RTS, this vehicle, uh, first one is going to be the tire coupled RTS. So here, uh, the simulator set up the vehicle tire seat, this vehicle tire sitting on the pan, on top of the servo hydraulic actuator with vehicle strokes. And here uh, you have the drive signal, which is sent through a, a controller to the actuator to exit the tires in the vertical direction. So here uh, you get uh, the details with respect to the vertical displacement of the tire. And, uh, and again you can get the details uh, when the tire contact is in is in contact with the road but not even when the tires. See how this tire is going to behave with different road condition. Okay? And when, when they are playing the, the brake, those things. And you have a second RTS called spindle coupled RTS. So this is how the second level you test it. So here uh, this simulator is also helping to replicate the, the last one is only vertical, but here it is going to be longitudinal, lateral and also vertical. All three displacement of the wheel, you can get it, the data you can get it. And uh, this will also help to replicate the acceleration and also the braking events. Uh, through the spindle connection, you are a spindle, okay, so you are a spindle and you operate a brake here, but here I think the brake is not applied here, it's just a wheel movement only in the vertical, so you don't have a spindle, right, to, to operate a brake, so that is going to happen here on the spindle, you tell about spindle, you operate a brake as well. Um, and again, this spindle coupled RTS uh, is most sophisticated one that can also produce up to 60 degree of freedom at each wheel okay in this event an event where when the, where the tire is not in contact with the road the surface can accurately be simulated and this also helps for your simulation this is the process for diagram for, for the road test simulator first you are going to determine the test schedule you are going to select a suitable test simulator is new road response that are necessary if it is necessary necessary only you're going for your road real-time testing okay otherwise uh, you can if it is not necessary you can directly go for a prepare to simulate and test specimen you can develop uh, the, the drive file you can design whether the design performance has been verified with the help of rts if it is not uh, verified then you go for a durability testing uh, in the vehicle real-time testing if it is yes then you can optimize the design further with changes but whatever even if you optimize also you can you need to go for your testing in a vehicle also okay and again uh, if the new data response uh, new road data is not required you go for a simulator or this directly if it is required what you do is you instrument the vehicle and set up uh, the acquisition system you acquire you need to get the data 
uh, and validate the road response data those the input you have to give it to the rts in the later stage okay if you have the data then it's okay directly you can go for the rts you can also do the analysis you have to edit the data uh, these are some of the things like when it comes to the the drive file you, when you're going to develop the file they develop so you have to identify the system you have to look for uh, some of the model inversion uh, drive signal calculation drive file generation so more of theory so it's basically i've just given uh, over you what is this drive file development is about this drive development is a process which is uh, a iterative method where you can measure the rollover data from a physical test or a simulation that you have calculated uh, based on the durability that you are going to consider for a vehicle and then vehicle components into the, the road test simulator basically again you have a flow diagram for this drive file development so first you are going to identify the system model then you are going to invert the identified system model then you are going to calculate uh, the signal to, to target vehicle response then you are going to drive the test simulator with the calculator response if there is uh, error then you go for a safe uh, save, saving the file drives file again if there is something it is having some error then you can recalculate it with respect to the signal so you have various uh, methods empirical method analytical method and semi analytical methods Based on the customer usage, road load data, and proving ground road load data, and you have to get all these details. Uh, you can use the transducers, actuators. See, this is uh, uh, the proving ground road load data acquisition, uh, which uh, they are going to test it in a ground, and uh, this is an overview of proving ground uh, in. Uh, in uh, idea idea in spain uh, okay um, so this is how they do the different type of testing okay um, um, here they have a test track which is this for your yeah, washboard road or comfort road or paved road different type of condition okay, where you have also have the repaired asphalt road gravel road and different uh, cobblestones road and these are the different thing and you do the testing here in this uh, uh, we call proving around uh, road load data acquisition you test it this is the the paved road in Spain you see the, the road how it is having and even you have the cobblestone road or the stone right how the vehicle is going to perform here But again, we also have the drawbacks with the cost is going to be higher, large time consumption and uh, time delayed associated with any method of physical testing. And uh, but this is very much important because uh, you need to provide uh, all the data. See, why we, we need to get all these things? If you are going for a physical uh, testing. Through the customer load data, what happens? Uh, it is going to be time and cost consuming, right? Because the test vehicle needs to be first built and before you go for any test testing. But but then when it comes to the RTS, those data can be taken here and you can do with less development time and development cost. Uh, even you can go for some of the FEA methods, multi body dynamics, MBDS system. modeling uh, hardware tools include the quarter vehicle test trick you can, you can use you can also use uh, the, the measurement to test with suspension kind of thing uh, where you can use accelerometer see here uh, you are going to use lvdt to understand the displacement 
load cell to measure the load acting onto the, the wheel and tires accelerometer how, how is the acceleration going to happen you also have tri-axial tire test track where you can also use this transfer for uh, this has been basically basically at the university of bringing ham they have used this which is used to measure the the, the stiffness and damping of the tire which is installed on a quarter vehicle test trick this is the tri-axial uh, tire test trick they measure the vertical movement of the tire they have the LVT sensor, they have the load and the accelerometer this is the brake drum and uh, The, even you also apply the uh, brake through the spindle and then you see uh, how it is going to affect the load onto the, the tire and wheel you can develop a yes, lab view for for this uh, where you can understand the tire characterization with respect to the lateral longitudinal road drum so how the signal is going to transfer These are some of the This is that even you can go for a multi party dynamics MATLAB. Uh, you can also use the CA model development uh, tools, softwares. So these are the inputs that you need to get uh, with respect to the wheel, tire, drug disc, caliper and you also need to have all these components for, for measuring it means uh, as a part of your uh, testing. This is the explore the view of a quarter vehicle testing model where you are going to have all, all the one what I have shown previously. So all these are very much important for you to go for uh, testing. Here you also need to understand what is the mass you are going to use, what is the inertia in x direction, y direction, in z direction for all these components. And you know spring is basically for the stiffness calculation. Uh, so this is an example of a JLR uh, where they have done the force versus displacement test. I see they applied a load of 40,000 newton maybe 40 kilo newton and they found that the displacement is 0 0.08 m meter it's a bump uh, bump stop uh, characteristics curve same JLR when they apply 10k newton force the velocity at which it is traveling is 88 meter per second and how that is going to affect the tire and the, the spring stiffness because we have covered all the things right it's not just the tire alone we are going to consider the suspension we are going to consider the chassis brake so all this data data we will get it when we are giving the uh, this one so this stiffness is basically for that uh, the suspension point of view you get a graph for, for the frequency versus uh, the magnitude impedance versus frequency time versus acceleration okay so just this is just an overview it's more of